Welcome back out to the greenhouse and happy new year. We're out here on new year's. It's about 30 degrees, maybe 30 degrees Fahrenheit, 31 maybe. So it's not too cold outside. We had a cold spell where it got down to single digits. And then we had a warm spell where we had 30s to 50s. We had abnormally warm days around Christmas and stuff. So it's been up and it's been down. We're still operating our compost. We're burning a fire today on New Year's here. My son and I were out here and he was making himself a slingshot. slingshot. He's making a slingshot body. So we were out here doing a little bit of work today. But since we didn't really have a video planned for today, we didn't really have anything, any topic we really wanted to cover yet. We've got a bunch of stuff in the works, just not really ready yet. So today we're coming out and we're going to plant some seeds. So planting seeds on New Year's. And if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've had a ton of you guys that have subscribed to the channel and follow along. We've got a lot of feedback, lots of emails, suggestions, ideas, and it's all great. I appreciate anybody who reaches out and shares their thoughts and finds interest in this. So thank you to all of you guys. Just wanted to take a moment because you guys make this possible. We're just the little guy on YouTube. No sponsors sponsors, no nothing. We're just doing this with you guys and for you guys. And obviously for ourselves, we're doing a ton of experimenting, learning, and we're going to be passing this on to our next greenhouse that we build. This greenhouse has been up for five years now. And with all of my ranting and raving over, what we're going to be doing is planting a few seeds. And I wanted to just talk about the seeds and what crops I selected here. It's just a select few, nothing crazy. And anybody should still have or could be able to order a find these pretty easily so planting in the middle of winter is not ideal it's not what we usually do so what we like to do is have all of these crops here 100% prepared and ready to go and growing into the winter but we do have a lot of crops from the summertime but with all of the crops that transition from season to season it's hard to have everything mesh together very well and we've had some rodent issues we had ourselves a chipmunk trapped in the greenhouse if you didn't see that in our first test video of our new microphone here so it wasn't a whole lot going on in that video so I don't blame you if you did not watch it we had ourselves a chipmunk that burrowed into the greenhouse found an absolute awesome place to live obviously and he ended up KOing himself in our compost heating tank <laughs> when he could have gotten water from our pond so this compost heating tank has been sitting between 75 and like 82 degrees most days and i don't know if that was the factor or not but he ended up doing a lot of damage to our compost heating system as far as draining all of the water out of our tank just tons of issues so he took himself out with all of the water it's not an ideal situation but the problem solved itself he did do quite a bit of damage what do you got back there i'm looking for a tiger's eye bunch of fossils. So that little chipmunk had disconnected either this or this, one of these two, and it sprayed all the water everywhere. So it was quite a catastrophe. Tiger's eye. Nice dirty little hands and a tiger's eye out here working. So we've had a few crops. He came through and topped a lot of our heading collards. We can see that our kale is starting to get some second sets of true leaves. He took one of our heading collards back there, all of our arugulas and mustards and what is this, a turnip or a seven top there. We've got a bunch of cilantro sprouting, lots of onions. We had harvested back all of our green sorrel here. And look at that. We've got new shoots of sorrel popping up right there. So coming down here, you can see that we've had some damage onto the heading collar. So this was like the main area where this thing lived for like two days. These leeks are a superfood. I am super stoked to have some good leeks growing underneath the lights because we always grow our leeks over by our pond, our perennial leeks. And these are just a regular annual leek. So these are just a regular leek or ramp. And those are perennial leeks or ramps. Just trying to keep the two separated when I'm saving seeds and stuff. So I want to start a nice perennial bed and be able to share those plants with everybody. We've got lots of spinach. You can see a little bit of yellowing on some of these and that's to be expected through these crops. Now we've got uh, a little bit of yellowing throughout the whole bed. So 
I would say that it could be a multitude of things. Competition for nutrients, a little bit of lack of moisture, or it could be excess moisture in the air, not the soil. So it could be from not having good enough airflow. And we've been using our little fan and stuff in all of our pak choys or tat soy there. We've been harvesting a ton of that. That one really doesn't like wintertime growing. It likes really bright sunlight and it likes it to be warm. But I always try some of these because we do have pretty good harvests and we'll just come out here and pick a bunch of leaves and be able to harvest that. <laughs> all of our rosemary here, this is a monster rosemary plant. Bunch of thyme. We've got some St. John's wort that we planted here. So I'm trying to start a little bit of perennial stuff, I guess, towards this end. So as those temperatures go up and down, we've seen pretty cold and abnormally warm. So we've got a ton of really cold weather coming up on us. We always get it worse as the winter goes on here. So I guess you guys came to see what we're going to actually plant today. I don't know if we're going to plant these on camera. I just wanted to share what we're doing. So I usually have a bunch of corn salad, the mache or lamb's ear, I believe. So we've always got that usually growing ahead of time. I forgot to plant these, so we're gonna try and get some of those. We've got our own saved cilantro. We've got spinach. We've got all these seeds that we basically pick up for like pennies on the dollar. So I do buy a ton at the end of each season. What'd you have? We've got some peas. Peas are a tricky one. We don't know if those will grow or not. Some Grand Rapids lettuce, that'll definitely grow. Some bell radishes might not get a whole lot of body to the radish but if we can eat the greens whole leafy green mix just lots of cool stuff our morris heading collards which we don't need to plant anymore of. we had this mustard it was i can't remember what color it was so i wrote purple or green because we had that drying up in the garage and forgot about it. I think it was green. So you'll notice that most of those crops are pretty cold weather crops amongst everything that we're going to be planting. And that's on purpose. They need to be cold weather crops. We're not keeping this thing above 60 degrees, you know? We're not really able to keep this poly greenhouse above 60 degrees. We've had everything we've thrown at it and that's about the max we can do for an overnight temperature it depends on the outside temps it depends on the wind but against temperatures in the teens or down into single digits overnight we can hold a lot of heat in here with the systems operating and all of the thermal masses that we can create for relatively cheap and operate for free so there's a huge difference between having a hot greenhouse and a heated greenhouse so if you're going to keep your greenhouse at 70 plus it's going to take a lot of effort so that's why we have tunnels that's why we've got lights put up those lights put off quite a bit of energy as heat and as light tunnels really do help keep a lot of that heat down to the ground we've got our stove we've got to run some experiments blowing heat into these tunnels and see what kind of temps we get we're still going to try and heat up the floor with that same system. So that is something we're going to be doing here very shortly when we get a nice sunny day. So I wanna take temperatures and have good data control on both sides. And trying to be as scientific with it as I possibly can. We stop playing with fire? With having a scientific approach in mind. So I'm trying to always replicate or have good data, good solid data to compare one to the other, no matter what the experiment is. I want to show where I'm going to be planting all of these seeds at here, taking them and scattering them sporadically throughout. So we've got a decent bit of kale that's going to come up. I kind of want to use the front of the beds a little more as the light does cover the whole bed and I want to kind of tuck some seeds into all of our heading collards and anywhere that we have an open spot sowing some lettuces we've got a ton of Egyptian onions that are all starting to really rebound after we transplanted so lots of good pest protection there that chipmunk actually had dug our tomato out right over here so we don't have our tomato in the greenhouse for the experiment anymore he decided to end the experiment so here's a good example of everything growing really well together heading collards spinaches pak choys and lettuce all just 
coexisting. I mean, we're going to have a fight for nutrients amongst all of these, especially in the very heavy sown areas. But other than that, we're having pretty darn good success in this greenhouse. We're going to do a lot more experimenting with free heating. We've got to put some systems together for these bad boys. I really want to get some data from those. All of our perennial stuff off to this side, kind of just waning from not having light. It's not getting cold enough to actually drop all the leaves very quickly. I mean, these outside are all toast and these still have green on them and stuff. Rosemary's nice and vibrant, all the lavenders, even the red sorrel. The red sorrel doesn't really like cold temperatures, but we're shooting up new shoots everywhere. Very interesting, all of our elderberries, everything. Everything looks awesome in here. It's really cool to have this space to experiment and put it to the test before we spend a decent amount of money on a greenhouse. I mean, this greenhouse cost us like 15 or $1,600. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. I've got this strawberry. Now I've been having this sit on the side of the pond for a couple days. I'm going to cut myself a hole and end up putting him with our floating mint here. The mint has decent roots, staying alive. So kind of operating these little floating pads. I've got another huge piece of foam. I wanna see what we can't do with the thermal mass of the pond itself. If I can just keep plants going, really like to have those floating roots to pull a lot of those uh, suspended sediments and things, just debris out of the water to help keep it clean and clear. I mean, any open water system, you can see our compost heater running there. Any open water system is going to create algae eventually. And the pond has tons of nutrients, so it grows algae very readily with very little sunlight. It just grows algae like crazy. So all of those extra nutrients that we're not filtering out with a biofilter is really making a difference on the pond. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and checking all of our videos out. And if you have any questions on anything, kind of just jumped around today, gave a general tour of everything that's going on on the new years here. Compost heater still putting out some decent heat. The shell of it is pretty cool. I mean, the shell of it's sitting like 60, 70 degrees under the tarp and it's cold outside, but it's not absolutely freezing, but not having the same temperature as outside as on the surface or that crust of our compost pile, that is pretty darn cool. That means we still have a lot of heat left and a lot of energy left in that pile. We've been keeping it covered, keeping it nice and moist and just trying to get the best longevity out of it that we possibly can. If there's any questions, drop those to us. We just wanted to share what we're doing on New Year's and wish everybody a happy new year. Happy Happy New Year! Yes, and we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!